All right. Let's start. So thank you very much, everybody, for taking your time to join uh, the ERS Skills Lab by Pentax Medical. This is Satsuki Amano, a Global Product Manager from Pentax Medical, um, joining from Germany. And together we have, uh, please welcome Professor Eric van der Heiden, a professor interventional pulmonology at Bradbaum University Medical Center in Nijmegen, Netherlands. Hello, Eric. Thank you very much for being here. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. So we um, we are looking forward to uh, have you share your clinical experience with our new single-use bronchoscope later in this session. So we'll we'll hear from you more. And let's see. So before I hand over to Professor Van der Heiden, I would like to briefly go through the aim of the design of our new single-use bronchoscope, Pentax Medical One Pomo. Uh, this is a single-use bronchoscope system that provides a superior suction capacity um, and an HD image quality to help improve pulmonary care. So our mission was to develop a solution that can provide the power of choice to the physicians. So the physicians have options in selecting reusable or single-use bronchoscope, depending on the situation, um, to ensure that the product address relevant and uh, pressing unmet clinical needs. The one palm was designed to uh, design in close collaboration with uh, healthcare practitioners to provide the system with not only the simplifying workflow, um, but brings high quality care without compromise with unparalleled ergonomics. And now I would like to share some key features that supports the aim of this system. So the large channel that we have uh, with a 15 French scope, we have two lines up of the scopes. Um, and for the 15 French scope, we have 3.0 millimeter um, working channel. And it is designed to deliver quick and efficient patient care as fast suctioning is important in difficult airway management. Um, it also allows uh, efficient uh, suctioning, even with the endoscopic devices inserted. So this this is quite a benefit for for our system, our single-use bronchoscope. And another thing is the that we have a superior image quality, the HD visualization in our system. Um, and it supports to, uh, to broaden in the clinical applications beyond the standard disposable scope. We have uh, the tablet looks like what you are seeing right now. It's 1M. Um, it's, it has the exposure control mode, image enhancement mode. Um, it also has an intuitive user interface. Uh, we design like a smartphone app, so it's quite easy to understand, easy to manipulate, to, to adapt in your um, daily practice. And here, I would like to play a video of how the image quality looks like. Yeah. So as you may know, um, Pentax Medical is ha has a, a very uh, high reputation and image quality processing, and we implement this technology know-how into this one palm system as well. And later on, we will see a live image of a video of a clinical um, image, but this is how you can see how high definition we have in our system, even in the single-use system. All right. Another differentiator that we have in our single-use scope is the unparalleled ergonomic. 
Um, so the scope was designed to mimic the ergonomic of a reusable scope that we have um, in the market already. Uh, we have a comfortable scope handling. It looks exactly the same. Um, the large, uh, er um, uh, large tip angulation and also the position of the design uh, the device insertion is also in the same position. So we can still use the same device and also not to change your use technique. Um, so that also brings you a seamless user experience. Um, yeah, so you can choose whatever you feel you need, either reusable scope or single use. So that was also our aim here. Right. And this brings um, to, to having our one pomo as an expansion of the power of choice to, to the physicians and Pentax Medical offers both conventional reusable bronchoscope and also the single use bronchoscope now. Um, and each has a different strength uh, while having the same design so that, the, so that you can choose which device to use depending on the situation, depending on the um, patient needs. And we as a Pentax Medical have more than 40 years of experience in developing um, endoscope. Um, so we brought all this knowledge this, um, of a uh, mechanical knowledge, uh, electric, and also the re image processing technology into this system as well, so that we can bring some benefit, uh, beneficial product to to the market and to the physician. So with the great support and collaboration with the bronchoscopist, we continue to evolve to, to provide a best solution to support the patient and physicians. And I hope that this can be another additional tool to bring value to your daily practice. So with that, um, I would like to hand over to Professor Eric van der Heiden um, to see more of the clinical use experience and to hear your thoughts on this. Okay, so Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So hello, uh, everyone. Thank you, uh, Satsuki, for this uh, nice introduction. And, uh, and hello, everyone, to join us uh, for the, uh, this launch of the, uh, of the new um, bronchoscopes that have been developed by, um, by Pentax. Um, yeah, so I had the opportunity to use the scopes the past couple of weeks. Uh, so the, the well, the the version that is now open and uh, uh, available for for clinical use and with the CE mark uh, uh, established. Um, and I would like to share with you uh, well the well the image quality and and the experience that uh, that I've uh, gained with the use of the scope. And well, first thing always is a. Well, how does it look like in in, in real uh, in real life? So, just a couple of uh, videos from uh, from an airway inspection, surveillance bronchoscopy. Uh, left side is a, a normal bronchoscopy of a normal patient, so uh, uh, who was undergoing a EBUS procedure for peripheral uh, pulmonary nodules and um, did not have any. Uh, exp well, we didn't expect any central abnormalities, but still, uh, when using the scope, or when using a, doing a procedure, you want to have a checkup also fit, uh, with uh, patients with peripheral pulmonary nodules that there's no central abnormalities to um, that you want to, that you've missed or were not visible on the CT or PET scans. So you can see uh, we're maneuvering around. Uh, we've had the uh, the right uh, lung, and uh, now we're entering into the left left lung. Well, uh, as you appreciate, the image quality is quite nice. Also, the lighting in the deep is is very nice, and you can maneuver and uh, see all the basal segments uh, down here. There's some small uh, mucus there that you can suction away, and uh, well, it, well, if you take up the scope and start working with it. it. Well, it feels like the normal scope, so there's no real issues there. And uh, you can just start over and get, and well, as in the normal scope, you need to clean your lens uh, sometimes. So you 
also see there's some uh, some mucus there. But if you well push it or rinse it a bit, then the image comes back again, I guess. Um, so I'll just skip a bit. So you see, uh, well, this is more of the same in the normal airways. And if I then start the uh, the right video, this is a patient um, who was for an EBUS procedure as well. So the introduction of the of the scope. There's the uh, glottis area, epiglottis, vocal cords, eyes open and wide. You can appreciate the movement of the vocal cords. But this patient had a, a central located uh, tumor. We already did an EBUS here and then uh, did the surveillance from coscopy because during the uh, the time between the referral for the EBUS and the, uh, the actual procedure. Um, well, we already saw with the EBUS that, uh, that the situation was uh, getting much worse. So this is the uh, distal trachea with the infiltrating cancer and the right side from the 4R region to R region. So with the very uh, thickened mucosa, and this is uh, the uh, well, the switch of the normal light back to the uh, eye scan uh, mode. So, yeah, and just as you, if you're working with Pentax uh, um, uh, scopes, then you're used to uh, the ability of changing the uh, the settings to the eye scan mode. And uh, this is to establish that the right uh, lung is still uh, uh, open and available uh, for. For ventilation. Um, yeah, so, well, just a, a, a complete procedure on, on this uh, video then, an the airway inspection of a patient in local and putting in a local anesthesia, propofol sedated patient. Um, propofol isn't really up to the good standards yet because you can appreciate the movement of the, uh, the airways and the patient's always also still talking, as you can see. So <laughs> we need to wait a bit. Uh, for the airways, for the uh, vocal cords to open up. Um, I did a patient with the anesthesiologist, and then it opens up, and you can instill the uh, local uh, lidocaine um, as we do. So, uh, the, uh, this is our 1% uh, lidocaine uh, solution getting in there just at the start of a normal bronchoscopy. I will put some in the, the uh, proximal part of the trachea and then. Uh, also in the left and the right main bronchus. This patient wasn't fully sedated yet. So there's some coughing still, as you can appreciate. Well, just like in a normal bronchoscopy, a normal scope, normal vision, uh, is well, very uh, much the same as with the um, this, the the Palm one, uh, the single use scope handles just the same as the um, normal bronchoscopes. Um, yeah, so I'll let you appreciate the, uh, the right upper lobe then, and then we'll move towards the bronchus intermedius, middle lobe, and the basal segment. So the uh, steering and the angulation is uh, uh, just the same as in the normal 15 scope and a, and a bit better than in the 19 uh, scope from Pentax. Uh, and it has the uh, the uh, working channel of, of a uh, bigger than the than the therapeutic scope from the 19. So suction power is good. Um, yeah, so this is still right. Uh, let's move to the left lung then. And then I can show you some more Clinical use, so we're entering the left lung, lingular subsegment numbers four and five. Here they are. Yeah. Let's have a peek in the number one, two, and three. So this is three anterior, and the one, two, clearly visible. And then here's the basal segments and the apical number six. Okay, um, on the next slide then, well, this is what most single-use bronchoscopes are used for in the, uh, in the past, so intubation. And, um, and this is an intubation using an easy blocker. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it allows a single lumen tube, um, and then you can just push this uh, easy blocker and 
push it until uh, on the carina. So you'll need an, an endoscope to position the uh, this uh, blocker correctly. And uh, this is check where you can see um, if the uh, how much volume you need to instill in in the um, balloon to block up the entire right lung. And they're marked with different colors. So the green, greenish balloon was on the right, and the bluish is on the uh, well. The very blue one is on the left side. Uh, that's difficult to see, but you can see there's there's a marker here at the end, which has a different color, and that represents with the the distal part. So you can see which um, which balloon you're inflating. And here you can see the inflation. Then you are sure that the position is okay. And on the bottom, I've also um, um, inserted some of the pictures. So this is just the, the tube inside, so very clearly visible, and, and the uh, images of the, uh, the position of the uh, easy blocker and the, on the carina and the um, balloon that's there. And this was a 52-year-old uh, patient with non-Hodgkin lymphoma and a growing cavity on the right lower lobe who was scheduled for a lumpectomy, and uh, he had a fetch. Uh, a, a VAT procedure, so a, a video assisted thoracical thoracoscopic surgery. A wedge resection, resection was done to confirm that the uh, that the uh, nodule was indeed a malignancy, and the on site pathology showed adenocarcinoma, and the, the procedure was proceeded with the lobectomy. Um, apart from the easy blockers, then uh, in lung surgery, of course, the uh, double lumen tubes are the other um, uh, tubes that uh, require a visual inspection. Uh, so uh, the, both of these uh, procedures are with the, the thinner single use scope, so the uh, 11 French version. Uh, we already switched from the right side, so we saw that the right side was in. In the uh, in the distal trachea, and you can appreciate the balloon on the left, and this is uh, entering in the left side to check if the distal part of the uh, the double lumen tube is still clear of the uh, subcarina for to the left upper and left lower bronchus. Um, well, if the uh, anesthesia usually now does this in in, in former times, we uh, we provided the service to the anesthesiologist, but we trained them in doing these bronchoscopies themselves. And um, um, well, you put in the, in the double lumen tube uh, um, um, in supine position, but then you need to turn the patient into a, a lateral decubitus position, and you need to check whether the, the tube is still in place. You can see the cuff of the, the left uh, main bronchus in, this, in the left, the cuff of the left um, uh, part of the double lumen tube still in the left main bronchus. Right side was clear. There's a lot of blood, but that was the uh, indication for this patient to undergo this uh, surgical uh, event. So this now the anesthesiologist pushes back the uh, scope in the lateral decubitus and see you can see that it's now really on spot with the uh, cuff there, um, really at the uh, at the uh, correct position for the. And the start of the uh, incision for the uh, uh, the surgeons. So the right side was uh, is uh, clear. Uh, the anesthesiologist will uh, switch to uh, left um, uh, lung ventilation only. And the indication for this bronchoscopy was uh, well persistent hemoptysis with the tumor in the right upper lobe. And uh, well, during this procedure, well, you saw that you. Can position the uh, the double lumen tube with the 11 uh, single use bronchoscope, but also during the uh, bronchoscope during the uh, surgery you need to recheck uh, now uh, every once in a while uh, that the position is still okay uh, since the uh, surgeons are maneuvering around with the uh, with the lung in a deflated state. So also on the left side check if it's all still okay in the left lateral decubitus. Uh, so the uh, scope end isn't riding towards the subcarina at the left lung. Um, and I'll uh, push the video a bit further towards the end. Um, some rinsing there. And um, this is in preparation during the bronchoscopy or during, sorry, during the uh, surgical uh, procedure. And a bit further to the end. 
you can also see how it looks like when the uh, thorax is opened and the uh, surgeon is looking to the end of the scope with his headlights on so the the illumination is automatically so um, when you need to here's the headlight of the surgeon coming up and it, it shuts down your own uh, light so you need to uh, tell the surgeon well uh, switch off your lights because I can't see anything anymore so uh, but it's really uh, is interacting very rapidly so this is uh, when you pull it back then lights back on uh, very uh, quickly uh, so it's always in uh, well it's it's very uh, nice uh, to use the uh, the uh, single uh, use scope for the uh, intubations, and uh, well, since since COVID has been around, we've we've been using the single use scopes much more often. And uh, well, since this scope feels like a normal bronchoscope, I uh, also used it uh, for interventional procedures uh, these uh, past couple of weeks. And uh, well, this is the inspection bronchoscopy. And uh, at the uh, beginning of this video, you could appreciate the uh, rigid scope that was in position. Also, a patient under full anesthesia, a female, 63 years of old, of age. She was uh, referred uh, due to recurrent uh, pneumonias, and then uh, CT uh, revealed a mass in the uh, right uh, lower lobe. So this is uh, left. Uh, patient under ventilation, so you can see the uh, movement of the smaller airways uh, when the uh, anesthesiologist pushes the balloon. So this is the rigid scope back, and now we are heading into the uh, right lung, I believe. Yeah, so some mucus there. Um, yeah, so the video always takes longer than... So this was right upper lobe. Let's move to the right lower, and there you can already see the tumor there. We didn't have a diagnosis uh, to start off uh, this procedure, so the uh, referring hospital did not dare to take a biopsy from this well polyp. Um, it's uh, it it moves around with the ventilation, as you can see. You can see a bit of the ves vasculature on top of it. With uh, and this is the eye scan mode then. Um, and you can see the vessels a bit better. You can see, yeah, so these are the vessels. So it's always the question, well, is this a carcinoid or is it a hamartoma or is it a, 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 um, another type of tumor? So it, it's, it, well, it looks really... Um, um, well, it's not ulcerating, so it, it, the first impression would be that it would be a carcinoid or a hamartoma. It's not really a fatty aspect in it. So we uh, decided to uh, use this single-use uh, bronchoscope, uh, so the 15 uh, version with the uh, white lumen, to uh, to take out this um, polypoid tumor. You can see the um, the snare coming out. So it's an electrocoagulation snare. And uh, you need to maneuver it a bit. So, well, here it depends on the how good you can steer the uh, the the bronchoscope. And since it feels just like a normal therapeutic bronchoscope, it's really much the same. So this was the well, the second or third uh, bronchoscopy I did with this single uh, use bronchoscope, and you can, could see the snare uh, pushing uh, through the uh, the uh, well the basement of the um, Polyp, and now I just put my scope on top of it, suction, <laughs> apply suction, and pull it out. Since we didn't have a diagnosis yet, this is the uh, the result after the electrocautery snare. So this, these are the basal segments. You can see that the uh, that the basal, well, the where the polyp was attached is nicely coagulated, but. Uh, uh, when you treat uh, um, uh, carcinoids like these, with a small carcinoids, less than 50 millimeters, then, then it's okay to take them out if you are able to, to uh, have a clean cut. But always this, uh, well, this basal margin is, is uh, of interest and, and is a potential risk where still carcinoid tumors uh, uh, cells can, can remain. So what, uh, what then is best is to apply 
cryo. So you can see the Irby cryo uh, contact probe in action here. So this is the 1.9 cryo probe. And here you can see the, um, the freezing effect uh, very nicely. And so we just move it around a bit and, and try to treat the entire area where the uh, polyp was attached and uh, freeze to kill any remaining cells. Uh, you can see the effect of the cryo there and just reposition slightly, only a few millimeters apart, and then uh, repeat it and treat the entire region. I don't, I prefer to use cryo since, since it, uh, um, well, there have been a couple of presentations already that cryotherapy for carcinoids is, is better than uh, applying, uh, well, argon plasma coagulation, for instance, in these uh, very narrow airways, because the argon plasma uh, is, well, it gives you a higher risk of um, scar tissue formation in, in, in these very tiny uh, airways that uh, could result into uh, blocking uh, due to the scar formation in the, um, in the peripheral airways. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I treated it uh, as uh, as I would treat a, a typical carcinoid in the, uh, in the endobronchial, uh, with an endobronchial location. Um, pathology came back a couple of days later and, and showed us that it was a chondral hematoma, so it, it was completely benign. Uh, so this procedure using the single-use bronchoscope is a, a curative uh, treatment uh, for this patient, and uh, there's no real indication to do any follow-up unless she has a um, recurrence of her, re of her pneumonias. So on top, uh, the still images uh, with the uh, normal white light, the iScan1, iScan2, and uh, and back to the normal one. And um, yeah, so the single-use scope with electrocautery snare, cryotherapy. I think it was the uh, second or third um, procedure with the uh, single-use scope. It's not really as uh, it was not intended to use like this, but it's uh, well since it's a normal scope. Uh, as it feels like a normal scope, uh, I've felt pretty confident in using the single-use scope for this. Um, this was an, another case uh, that that we did um, on that actually on that same day. Really, uh, a young kid, 16 year old uh, male, and it was this uh, eight, 18th month follow up for after an endoluminal resection, as you've just seen with the polyp I've showed you. But this um, youngster had a uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, and this was the image that was taken a year and a half ago. So the uh, entire left main bronchus was blocked by the uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Um, and, and we had them in follow-up with CTs and uh, recurrent bronchoscopies uh, to check whether there's no new growth uh, in the, uh, in the uh, area where the, uh, the uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma was attached. So, um, oops, so this is getting into the left main. So this was the, uh, the image of one and a half years ago when we took it out also with this snare as, as you have seen in the previous video. Well, it's really very quiet, no signs of recurrence. There's a, a bit of uh, accentuated vasculature, but well, it's nothing really to worry about. No signs of the uh, recurrence of the tumor. You can see deep into the uh, subsegments, and uh, well, the area of interest in this, uh, or this. These are the basal segments, of course. Uh, check that they're all open and fine. And so, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. And if we then uh, retract the scope, we have a good inspection of the left main. And you can see the scar tissue just a bit coming up here in this area. And it, yeah, it looks really, really good. But well, just to be safe, um, I decided to take some more biopsies to just to be sure that there's no um, 
no residual uh, tumor. Um, as you see, the uh, the instruments uh, they uh, come into your field of view from the left side, and uh, in the most of your scopes it will come uh, from the right side, but it doesn't really matter. You have beautiful image and clear view of what's uh, what's happening. So. Um, yeah, so it doesn't really uh, alter the procedure. This is just normal biopsy. It's uh, scar tissue, so you don't. It's not a, well, it's difficult to take really deep uh, uh, samples. And um, well, we took a few. And well, since uh, he's here and it's a youngster, and since we don't know the uh, result of the biopsy yet, I just uh, proceeded by adding another cryo run. So this is the uh, every cryo again, and we treated the in the area where we took the biopsies and the uh, scar tissue area just to be sure. But the final uh, pathology didn't show anything abnormal, abnormal just scar tissue. So uh, we, uh, well, looking back at it, it's, I didn't really have to do this, uh, but uh, well, since it's easy and safe, it's, um, it only added a couple of minutes uh, to the procedure. You can see the freezing and the thawing again. So it's uh, well, very nice, good image quality and good scope handling allowed me to do this. Um, yeah, so well, the, the uh, couple of weeks that I've had this scope, um, I think uh, this summarizes the the benefits of the, of the single-use uh, bronchoscope. So image quality is really, really good. And scope handling, scope ergonomics are really like uh, the, uh, the the normal scopes that you have been using in these past couple of years. It has a, a nice working channel that allows you to use the tools that you normally use. It has good angulation, good suction, and um, yeah. So uh, well, the normal procedures that you would choose a single-use bronchoscope for is, well, airway infection, the uh, intubations with easy blockers or double lumen tubes, but so selective intubation during uh, lung surgery or difficult intubations for patients with uh, difficult uh, airways for the anesthesiologist. And um, as you've seen, it can also be used for interventional bronchoscopies. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, uh, Potentially, you saw that I was keeping the the cryo probe uh, closer than you would do with a, a normal scope. Uh, so, uh, yeah, where you may be more well, have some more fear of damaging your scope. In this case, well, you throw away the scope, so it doesn't really. Uh, yeah, you can hold the um, the cryo a bit uh, closer to the tip of your scope. And of course, yeah, the big, big, big advantage is that you'll have a clean scope for every patient. And, and we've learned from uh, yeah, we, last year on ERS, we also uh, had this a session with Pentax uh, that was organized uh, to, um, well, to evaluate the, the potential use of using single-use bronchoscopes. And, uh, well, corona has, uh, has hit us, uh, COVID-19, and, and many of us have been started using and the... Um, the single-use bronchoscopes to do the uh, lavages uh, to rule out uh, um, aspergillus, so the uh, fungal infections in patients who are on the ICU with, uh, with um, COVID-19. And um, um, this is really a, a big uh, area where the single-use scopes come into play. So, and also um, you. Um, may want to choose a single-use bronchoscope in patients with immune deficiencies um, to, um, uh, well, to reduce the risk of, uh, of uh, uh, cross-contamination uh, with bronchoscopes since the, uh, well, the evidence that's out there in the, uh, in the public domain on the several uh, studies have shown that, well, our scopes, uh, despite our, all our efforts to clean them, are not as clean as we uh, think they are, and and are definitely also um, getting um, uh, not scarred, I would say, but uh, uh, have small damages of the of the use um, in in our working channels that uh, are at risk for uh, um, infection. Um, 
And but uh, but of course, uh, well, the, also the use of a single-use scope, as uh, we've uh, learned uh, from the, uh, the COVID-19 period, is the prevention of health uh, of risk for healthcare uh, workers. So the, there's no need to clean the scope and um, and put them at risk to uh, uh, to um, to infections due to uh, the cleaning process. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the, the uh, an, a small overview of the uh, potential use of the uh, uh, single-use bronchoscope, and uh, I think I would like to hand over back to Satsuki uh, for the Q and A and answer any questions that you may have. All right, thank you, thank you, Professor Eric van der Heiden, for your presentation and sharing us your first several experiences with one pomo. Um, it was great. I, I I was quite excited to see how image comedy also turned out very nice um, and that you found some value in using the scope and even in your interventional pulmonology uh, and interventional bronchoscopy procedures. Um, did you also uh, find the suction power helpful during those interventional pulmonology uh, bronchoscopy procedure when you were using some devices? How was the suctioning while the device were inserted? Did you um, yeah, so, so, so the lumen is a bit wider than the therapeutic scope, so normally I would have used the, uh, the 19, and which has the uh, 2.8 uh, millimeter working channel, and most of the instruments that we use have, have a 2.0 um, um, uh, outer diameter, uh, but the, um, the uh, loop, so the electrocautery snare that I use is a bit bigger, so it's 2.3, 2.4, um, and then it's difficult to suction anything out. So this, this extra lumen allows you to have both suction and, and uh, well, you can still maneuver and uh, see what you want to do uh, uh, easy, more easily. But of course, uh, well, the, 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 if you're doing a bronchoalveolar lavage, then the suction really is a, a uh, is a, comes in handy, or if you're entering into a bleed, but uh, Luckily, I didn't have any major bleeding yet, so <laughs> I hope to to avoid uh, using uh, the scope for a major bleed. Uh, so, uh, especially, uh, mm -hmm. well, the the big channel will uh, will help you there, but uh, yeah, it's always better yeah. to avoid bleeding. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Great. And uh, how was the um, the the device insertability? See where it has, is it, does it make a difference when the scope has a, the exact same um, ergonomic? Does it do you feel more comfortable using it? And are you using more? Um, do you see a potential in using more in your endoscopy suit to have single-use reusable scope? Yeah, so it, it really look, works like a normal scope. So if <laughs> it, it, you know, the only difference is that that the uh, the um, in your view, the instruments come out from the left instead of the right, but uh, the insertion is, is quite the same, uh, and, and your nurses are used to the, mm. uh, the same positioning, so it's uh, really easy uh, to use. And um, the, uh, the left and right uh, coming out of it, well, it doesn't really um, make, make a difference to me, at least. And uh, um, so it's um, yeah, it's just like not having a normal scope. It's only lighter, so uh, you don't need as much uh, force in your arms uh, to uh, to work all day. <laughs> but, right. Uh, yeah. 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 Good. And would you say that uh, you would still use both reusable and single use in the next years? Um, what's your pers um, perspective? on this uh, bronchoscope on a single yeah. use coming in? Yeah, so, well, that, that, that depends a, a bit on, there's, uh, there's two issues there. So, so since COVID-19, we've learned that the, um, uh, well, we've become aware of the risk for our uh, co-workers in, in, uh, who are involved in the cleaning of the bronchoscope. So, 
Um, since COVID has come around, we have started using single-use bronchoscopes for all the lavages mm. we need to do on the uh, on the ICU, and we'll continue to do so. Mm -hmm. um, in patients who are um, um, uh, if, well are of risk to us uh, due to their uh, virus load. Uh, but I think we need to expand it also to uh, patients who are having immune deficiency. So uh, um, well, uh, when the patient from the hematology department uh, is being admitted to ICU uh, and has a high risk of having a, um, a fungal, fungal infection with aspergillus or whatever type of uh, uh, fungal infection, then uh, these patients are also at, at risk for obtaining more and more uh, bacteria or fungi or whatever and uh, multi-drug resistant microbes uh, are around us all the surrounding us mm -hmm. and so uh, I think I w uh, would uh, prefer to use a single use uh, bronchoscope or so a clean scope for for these patients as well mm -hmm. Um, and well, in our center, at least, there's a big discussion uh, ongoing on the uh, centralization of the um, uh, 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 cleaning and disinfection um, room. So, uh, in, well, in, in practice, that will translate into um, uh, now in my endoscopy department, the, the cleaning is at our department and all the scopes are stored in the uh, in the drying cabinets there and are ready to use any time of day. But uh, when the, this um, the cleaning and, and storage will be transported into our uh, in, into the uh, into a central location in our hospital, it's a big hospital, so uh, and if we then need to uh, have an emergency uh, bronchoscopy uh, during uh, out of office hours, and uh, then um, yeah, we need to have the scope stand by, and uh, that would mean that well, and, uh, that we need to have uh, all varieties of scope having standby. Mm -hmm. So an 11, a 15, and a 19 scope uh, at any time of day, um, ready to uh, to start. Uh, 24-7 uh, uh, and every day of the year. Mm -hmm. And that will mean that every day all these scopes, if we use them or not, need to go back and have transportation in, well, from uh, to and from the endoscopy unit and have to be cleaned so that will um, we'll, uh, have a, uh, an effect on the lifespan of our normal bronchoscope. So my, um, uh, my view and uh, uh, my plan is that we will uh, s switch from using the um, standard bronchoscopes to the, uh, the single-use bronchoscopes for out-of-office hours mm -hmm. entirely. So, mm -hmm. so, that's the, uh, so that's the intent. Yeah, I see. So you, you think you, uh, we have, you, have a, a poten you have benefits in having the selection like of having both so that you can have both single use in your clinic and also them usable when you want to do more yeah so in in normal procedure. planned procedures mm -hmm. we can still use our uh, our normal scopes and and for unplanned uh, emergency procedures and out of office procedures that yeah. will, you have always to have the the scope stand by and just uh, pull it out and uh, and well it's also the big advantage that you don't need to have the big card but just can carry along the uh, the docking station and the uh, the uh, how do you call it the iPod. tablet the, uh, the tablet <laughs> yes sorry <laughs> <laughs> so it's really nice right. and easy and you can go quickly to the uh, yes yes to the okay. or OR. yeah that, that's great to hear, and I and I appreciate your support, and I hope um, you have more experience with this product moving forward, and see how how much more potential we have um, in using this system as well. And just one question: um, so you also mentioned some uh, patient with fungi inspection. Do you see, think that this high image quality will also have a potential in seeing those 
small. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, well, I've, I've used it uh, as you can see in the uh, in the diagnostic and therapeutic procedures as well. So um, and I wouldn't have there that without the uh, the excellent image quality. So. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this 60-year-old or the other patient, uh, that uh, you really want to be sure that uh, that you're not under treating a patient uh, like that. So uh, the image quality, uh, well, I, I felt really confident in doing these procedures due to the uh, the uh, very nice image quality that uh, that it has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great to hear. All right. I think we are. Th the time is going up. Um, Eric, do you have any last comment? Um, <laughs> we have 30 minutes, but I think, okay. No, if there's no, no more questions from, I don't see any questions from the audience. Uh, no, it's, it's a great scope. Thank you for developing it and, and bringing it to the market. And uh, yeah, hope yeah. we can uh, proceed in uh, improving uh, our tools further and further. Yes. Let's let's all work together. All right. Thank you very much, Eric van der Heijden. Um, and we will thank all of you uh, for joining our session. And we would like to close this session. So I hope I wish you a happy day.